George Martin Jr. To our first time guests who are here in person and for those of you streaming online, happy Resurrection Sunday. Because of Jesus' sacrifice, we have eternal salvation. And that's something to celebrate. Pastor Martin is wrapping up his sermon series entitled The Road to Calvary. Today's word is rightfully entitled The Crucified Son and Resurrected Lord. You can follow in your Bibles or your Bible app in John chapter 20, verses 1 through 9. And our vision is to become the church that Christ intended it to be, to know God and to make him known as our mission. And we are committed to loving God, serving others, and are unashamedly obsessed with sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. We live stream the service every Sunday on our YouTube and Facebook page. So at any time, you can go back and take a look, get caught up. And while you're there, like and subscribe. We greatly appreciate it. All right, it's time for praise and worship. There they are, ready to bring the house down. Put your hands together and stand to your feet for the Amity Praise Team. Praise the Lord, everybody. Oh, come on, our Savior lives. Our Savior lives. Our Savior lives. He died so that we may live eternally. And I don't know about you, but that's something to be excited about. Our Savior Resurrected with all power. 
and Savior rose, and we rose with him. Yes. Good morning, Amity. I am Elder Wesley Sneed, and I am overjoyed. I am jumping up and down inside, but I want to try to not to do any gymnastics up here, but it's a good thing. Uh, this is Resurrection Sunday. This is Resurrection Sunday, and we welcome all of our stewards, our guests, our friends who are worshiping with us today in this service. We're just glad that you're here for all sorts of reasons, because whether you're new, whether you're old, uh, whether you're just stopping by and you just saw the sign along the street, we're glad that you're here. We're so glad that you're here. We're more so glad that you're here because our risen Savior is here with you. And, uh, if this is your first time being here with Amity, we would like to just welcome you. Uh, take out your phone, your text, and text us to 469-270-5517. We want to connect with you. We want to let you know. We want, you, we want to know you. But we also want you to know us, to give you an opportunity to interact with us, to talk with us, and we can talk with you. Uh, but so if you would do that, we would be very glad to connect with you and give you any information, answer any questions you might have. Just We just want to say we want to make this day more complete for you. Uh, each week, we, uh, we, we stand here, we, we recite our congregational scripture because it's a commandment that he gave to us to receive all authority, to receive, possess all authority. He said, and as we go through John chapter 13, 34, 35, and if you recite with me, this is what he commanded us to do. A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another, even as I have loved you. Let me all oh, yeah. By this, all men will know that you are my disciples you have love for one another. Amen. Let us seek the Lord in a word of prayer. Father God, we are grateful, we're thankful, we're blessed, we're overjoyed, we're privileged. All of those adjectives that say we are grateful, we are today. You've given us a blessing. You've helped us to realize that you are the risen Savior. You rose from the dead. We have evidence of you. And so with that, Father God, we, we just thank you for given us another opportunity to stand, you've given us another opportunity to breathe. And so what that means to us is we have another opportunity to serve you, to worship you, to praise you, to let you know that we love you as you loved us. Help us, oh Father, to be better today than we were yesterday. Help us to love one another unconditionally. And yet, Lord God, help us to seek each other as we go. Father God, we thank you and we praise you. We bless this service and all things that go along in it. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, all right. We want everyone, there's some new faces here. We want you to mingle a little bit, take some time to get to know one another. Say hello. Anyone that you don't know, just reach and hug them. Even if the people you do know, do that. We want to be with that. All right, good morning. <laughs>
a little bit of housekeeping. If you're sitting in a, not here, but squeeze in. We got some more people coming in and we need more space. So just squeeze in, doesn't matter what, from which side. So when somebody comes and asks you if there's a vacant seat, just slide in, slide in, slide in. Good thing, good thing. All right. Uh, typically, uh, as a body of believers, we engage in the Lord's Supper on first Sunday. But we are going to do one of God's sacraments today on Easter Sunday. We're going to have communion. We're also going to have baptism later. But we're going to fulfill one of his commandments today. So be blessed. Celebrate with us. We'll pass it on to Pastor and, all, and, our, and the Eller team and the deacons. But thank you. Have a wonderful day. Be blessed. We oftentimes quote the psalm that says, this is the day the Lord has made, and let us rejoice and be glad in it. Usually when we say that, we realize, realize that God is the creator of all things, but this is Resurrection Sunday, and this is the day the Lord made a way for you and I to place our faith in Christ Jesus because when he rose from the grave, all of the claims that he made, all of the miracles that he had done, it all rested upon whether or not he could keep that last promise. Because he said, I'm going to lay my life down. No man's going to take it from me. But he said, but after three days, I'm going to pick it back up. And I just want you to know he rose. And because he rose, we commemorate and celebrate his body and his blood. Lest we forget that he was not a martyr. He wasn't a man that died for a good cause wasn't a good guy that was done wrong. He was the perfect lamb of God that was coming to shed his blood to cover the sins of the world. Because God had already made it clear that without the shedding of the blood, there is no remission of sin. And the writer of Hebrews said that the blood of animals never had the capacity to truly take away the sins of the world. So God sent his only begotten son. And here's the beauty and the blessing of his great love. They tried to kill him multiple times before Calvary. But Paul said he became obedient unto death, even and specifically the death of the cross. So we thank him today. And what, great, what greater day or greater opportunity than on the day that we celebrate the resurrection power. Because the same power that raised Jesus from the dead is the same power that saves you and me. And so as we partake in this moment, we're all invited to the Lord's table. But the Apostle Paul said that we should not engage in this in an unworthy manner. So he says, take, let each one take a moment and examine himself. Because he said, if you would judge yourself, you would not be judged of God. And he said, then partake. So we're going to take a moment of quiet, personal reflection that you might speak to the Lord that you may ask for forgiveness for anything you've said or done since the last time you partook of his table. Because the promise that we have in him is that if we would confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Would you join me in prayer? Father, we are thankful for your great love that we celebrate today. And Lord, you knew that as life happens, sometimes we can lose track 
of the things that are most important. So you said that as often as you do this, do this to remember me. So Lord, we celebrate, we commemorate, but we also appreciate what the Lord Jesus did for us and died for our sins. So Lord, we pray today that as we partake, we just say, God, forgive us for anything we've said or done or even intended to do because we know you know the counsel of our heart that was not pleasing in your sight. And we confess and claim the promise you made that if we would acknowledge our wrongdoing, you would forgive us. So now we ask God that you would sanctify this bread. May it be used to represent the body of Christ and sanctify this juice. May it represent the blood of Christ. And may we never forget the awesome sacrifice made for our sins. We thank you and we love you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You should have already been given your sacrament. So if you would pull back the first tab to reveal the bread. And if you would afterwards take it in your hand and wait and then repeat after me that we may all partake together. If you would hold it up to the Lord and repeat after me. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us commune together. We would repeal the second tab back. And repeat after me. He also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Let us commune together. Let us pray. Father, we are so thankful that your everlasting love that was demonstrated for us on Calvary and Jesus' obedience in love for finishing the assignment. We're so grateful today that we have forgiveness of sins and the opportunity to live eternally with you when you return. And may we never forget your love and sacrifice for our sins. We thank you and we love you. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. God bless you.
It's all worth it because he lives. Because he lives, it's all worth it. Because he lives, it's all worth it. Because he lives, it's all worth it. It's worth it. 
to pursue him with all your heart. It's worth it. It's worth it to recognize that you can't do it by yourself. It's worth it to recognize that that's love. Jesus went to Calvary to save a wretch like you and me. Oh, that's love. The songwriter wrote some years ago, what's love have to do with it? But I'll tell you, because of Calvary, love has everything to do with it. Because if he didn't love me, he thought I was worth saving. He thought I was worth keeping. He thought I was to die for. And because of all these things, it's worth it. Because in the midst of all that you face, having hope in a hopeless world, having confidence that your Savior loves you and that he will keep you. Is there anyone here today that you messed it up and someone walked away and said, you know what, I, you, that's enough. But the God that loved us, he's not just the God of a second chance. He's the God of another chance. And I don't know where you are in your chance list, but I promise you this, that the blood that never loses its power can still cover you. So it is worth it in the midst of this time. Let us recognize the need to reverence and to be grateful for our Lord. Amen. Would you stand to your feet and grab your Bibles? We're going to get right into the Word. We've got a lot. We've got a baptism coming. On this day that we celebrate the risen Savior, there's seven individuals, two pairs of husband and wife. Amen? Amen. That's worth celebrating. And while you're standing, turn to John chapter 20. We're going to read verses 1 through 9. We have been in a sermon series entitled all month long and entitled the road to Calvary and we've used John's gospel as our road map because if you take a look through John and you survey it you find that everything that John is doing is pointing the reader to Calvary to help that person who reads to know that Jesus the Christ is the Savior of the world. Amen? Amen? John chapter 20, verse 1 reads as follows. Now, the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb early while it was still dark and saw that the stone had been taken away. Then she ran and came to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved and said to them, they have taken away the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Peter therefore ran, went out and the other disciple and were going to the tomb. And upon their arrival, we see that. So they both ran together, and the other disciple outran Peter and came to the tomb first. And he said, and he stooped down and looked in, saw the linen cloths lying there, yet he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb, and he saw that the linen cloths lying there, and the handkerchief that had been around his head, not laying with the linen cloths, but folded together in a place by itself. Then the other disciples who came to the tomb first, went in also, and saw and believed. For as yet they had not known the scripture that said he must rise again from the dead. The word of God is blessed. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. If I've not already said that, happy Resurrection Sunday. Amen. As I said before, we are finishing up a sermon series for the month of March that's entitled, The Road to Calvary. And we've been walking through John's gospel because we believe that John 
presents the gospel in the most clear and simple way. He presents that, this, that salvation is a gift from God and is obtained through forgiveness and placing our faith in Christ Jesus. Now, John's gospel was the last of the gospels written. So when you go back and you look, you see Mark was uh, believed to be the first, and then Matthew, then Luke. But then John comes along, and he takes a different approach. The first three gospels are what's called synoptic, meaning that they, they share some of the similar uh, occurrences of Jesus' ministry time. But John takes a different approach, and so he doesn't take a chronological approach, he takes a topical approach. In John's gospel, he wants to, even though Jesus did many other miracles, John only focuses on seven miracles that he believes were signs that Jesus was truly God's son who came down from heaven. But he also records seven times that Jesus hearkens back to uh, Moses and God's conversation in the Old Testament when Moses asked them, asked God, who should I tell them has sent me into Egypt to free the slaves? He says, tell them I am that I said I am. So then John records seven times in which Jesus says, I am, in his gospel. So we see that John is building this case, and he's, he's hoping to establish this sense that no matter who you are, no matter where you come from, no matter what your context, if you come to read his gospel, that you should leave with this overwhelming sense that Jesus was not just another man, but that he was God in flesh who came into the world to be the perfect Lamb of God, to die for the sins of the world. Now, it's important to understand this because as we talk about the road to Calvary, building the case that John, uh, that John builds that, that Jesus came into the world he came down from God. He records one of the most profound exchanges of all of Jesus' ministry. He records one night where one of the religious leaders of the day, Nicodemus, slipped in and talked to him at night, and Nicodemus begins to ask him questions, and Jesus recognized that this was an opportunity for salvation to come to Nicodemus. He says, Nicodemus, you must be born again. Nicodemus says, well, how can I be born again? I'm an old man. Shall I go back into my mother's womb? He says, no. He says, that which is born of the flesh is flesh, but that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Don't marvel that I say to you, you must be born again. And then he says something to Nicodemus. He says, Nicodemus, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Just the reality of knowing that you need to be saved from something should pique your curiosity. I don't know because if there was smoke in the back and somebody said smoke because I want to be saved, I want to find out what kind of smoke is it? Is it cooking smoke or is it burning smoke? Because there is a difference. So the idea that he says, for God so loved the world that he might save, save from what? The apostle Paul says that the wages of sin is death. And if we, on our best day, everyone in here, we've gotten it wrong. So he says, all have sinned and all have come short of the glory of God. But look what he goes on to say. For the wages of those sins is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. 
it's important to see that's why we celebrate the risen Savior because when Martha came, the, the sister of Lazarus, she came running to Jesus and she said, Jesus, if you had been here, my brother wouldn't have died. And she, he says, Martha, he'll live again. She says, yes, Lord, I know that, you, that he'll live again in the resurrection. He stops, says, Martha, hold on for a minute. He said, I'm not just about the resurrection. He says, I am the resurrection. And if he is the resurrection, then his resurrecting speaks of who he is. Because it just works like this. If you do it, you become it. In order to be a keeper, he has to keep. And if he's going to be a keeper, he has to have kept. So the God who is a keeper is one who keeps. The one who, the God who resurrects is the one who was resurrected life. So as we consider this today, as we wrap this message up, it's important to then provide you with this important part of the sermon series. Because today our sermon title is The Crucified Son, But the Resurrected Lord. Because when Jesus came, he came to offer himself for the sins of the world. He came as the Son of God, God's Son, who's the perfect Lamb of God, who has come into the world, that he may offer himself for the sins of the world. And therefore, coming into the world to offer himself for the sins of the world, he pays the ransom for all of our sins. That's good to know because I don't know about you, but I was, at one point, I, I miscalculated my pocket. And I'm in the restaurant and I'm, we got carried away with our order. <laughs> and so when the bill came, I wasn't expecting to see so many numbers in the list. So as the group is still talking, I'm looking at it and, and making sure it was low light, so I want to make sure that, it, that I was reading it correctly. And as I was sitting there, I was saying, man, how is this going to play out? <laughs> so I began praying, Lord, I don't know, I don't want to embarrass myself. We got guests here, and, and, and this would be absolutely embarrassing. But in the midst of my anguish and my concern about how I was going to pay the bill, a person from across the table said, I got the tab. And see, I don't know about you, but, but while you're sitting here, well, you're looking good today, but I will tell you, there's something we've said or done in our lifetime that God had to look over, and Jesus said, I know you got a bill that you cannot pay, but I'm going to step in and get the tab. So, yes, he suffered because he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. Yes, he suffered. Yes, they crucified him. However, the story did not end when he went down. Because, he said, just like a grain must go into the ground and die, that it may bring forth much fruit. Because he died, they buried him. The fruit of his death and his burial and his resurrection is that faith can come to anyone here today who's willing to put their confidence in this gospel message. So the reality that we have is that in, in spite of the fact that there is a debt, 
And in spite of the fact that we can't pay it, the beauty and the blessing is we have someone who loved us enough, who reached across the table of your life and said, don't worry about the bill because I've paid it all. So we shared with you that John's gospel can be broken up into um, five sections or five distinctions. The first part, John presents Jesus as God incarnate, God who came into flesh. Then the next section, he, he presents him as Jesus, the Son of God. Then from there, he presents Jesus as the one who is opposed by men. The fourth section, which we covered last week, is he prepares his disciples for his departure. And then finally, the fifth section, his crucifixion, his resurrection. If you're you're following along in your Bible, you'll find that John records in the 18th chapter, verse 1, going all the way through chapter 21, verse 25, that's where John records the crucifixion of Christ. But then he also then breaks that down. He starts out by presenting the fact that Jesus is first, his, has his final rejection. You see that in John, in John chapter 18, verses 1 through 9, no, verse, verse, chapter, chapter 18, verse 1 through ver, chapter 19, verse 16. He, he, he shares how there's this rejection that happens. So we see in chapter 18, verse 1 through 11, that he's arrested. He's betrayed by by, uh, Judas, and he's arrested in the Garden of Gethsemane. Then he has, he records uh, Jesus' trial. And he records that from John chapter 18, verses 12 through chapter 19 through 16, But he breaks down Jesus' trial into four parts. He actually presents some detail or information that the other Gospels do not cover. He presents first that that Jesus goes before Annas, who is the the father-in-law of Caiaphas, who is the, or Caiaphas, who is the high priest at that time. So he records that he goes before and then he shows that he goes before Caiaphas, and then he shows that he goes before Pilate for the first time. Now, John does not record that in between his first time before Pilate, he also goes before Herod, because at some point, as Pilate begins to run the course, he realizes, I cannot find any fault in this man. He says, but if I send him to Herod, Herod is, is, is the one who, who's reigning over, over Galilee where he spent most of his time. Maybe Herod can deal with this. Herod sends him back and ultimately Pilate has to make a decision. And that leads me to this question because John records Jesus' trial. So I'd like to ask you this question. What trial proceedings have you taken Jesus through? We see what the Jews were, that were trying to crucify him did, but, but what trial proceedings have you taken him to? What have you laid up on him? to say, if you be the Christ, if you are the Christ. What voices are you listening to who are false witnesses saying that Jesus is not who he truly is? Because as a part of the trial, they they brought in individuals to come in and to say, he said this and, and he said that. He did this and he did that, but they were false witnesses. Have you been listening to other voices that speak about who Jesus is? But here's the key. The reality 
to truly know who Jesus is, you got to ask someone who knows him. Here's what happened. So Jesus was walking with his disciples, and he said to him, he said, he says, who do men say that I am? He says, what are people saying about me? He said, then they said, some of them say that, that you're Elijah, some of, the, some of them say you're the prophet. But then Jesus stopped because he had spent time with them, and they had been walking with him for some time. He said, but who do you say that I am? Peter stood up and said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus says, flesh and blood did not reveal that to you. Because ultimately today, if you put your confidence in Christ Jesus today, it doesn't start with you. It starts with him. Because here's what Jesus says. He says, no man can come to me unless my father is already drawing. And I believe that today is a part of his drawing that he said, you need to be here on Resurrection Sunday because I want you to know that I love you with an everlasting love. So then we move further into the up the road to Calvary. Uh, and then we see that, that John records the actual crucifixion. And he records that from chapter 19, verse 17 through 37. He doesn't give it as long of a description of the crucifixion, but he does position it in order or so that it is very clear that he was dying for the sins of the world. So one of the things that, that, that we see after we see his crucifixion, we find that, that, that he points to the various different elements of that crucifixion. Chapter 19, verse 17 through 18, we see the crucifixion. We see Pilate's inscription where Pilate puts above the cross the king of the Jews. Pilate was recognizing that there's something different about this man because you have to understand he's taking a risk by calling anyone else king in Caesar's kingdom. But it seems something that says that this Jesus is not just your average man. Someone said that Superman is able to leap tall buildings in a single mile. Faster than a locomotive. But I tell you today that even Superman had kryptonite. But as the choir has already said, no one can defeat him. No one can kill him. No one can dethrone him because he reigns. See, the reality today is that you may try to compare him to many other great men, but I promise you today, no matter how they shake up, they do not add up to who Jesus is. The great king who was willing to die. John chapter 19, verse 30. Hear this word. It says, so when Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, it is finished. This is important because, as I said earlier, he was here to specifically die for the sins of the world. At one point, they tried to throw him off a cliff. Now, think about this. None of us here just like to be tortured. Amen? Amen? Because Amen? Amen. we all want comfort. We want it to be easy. Amen? Amen? So, Jesus, they tried to throw him off the cliff. He came to die, but he didn't come to be thrown off the cliff. At one other time, they wanted to stone him, but he slipped away from them because his time had not come. 
because ultimately he was set on doing God's plan God's way. And I got to ask you this question that how often do you get off track from the plan that God has that he's already made clear for you? Because of convenience. Because here is Jesus. He's on the cross. He's in the final moments of his crucifixion. He's on the cross. They whipped him all night long. They, they, they spat in his face. They plucked his beard out. They put a crown of thorns on his head. They have nailed him literally to the cross. And he's on the cross, and he's still thinking about you and me because in the midst of that, he knew that one thing had not been fulfilled that had been prophesied about him. They had not given him sour wine. Now imagine the anguish of being on the cross, the anguish of, of, of his flesh being ripped off of his back, being nailed to the cross. In the midst of all of that, here's what he does in order to fulfill God's plan. He says, I thirst. Because once they gave him the sour wine. He said, it is finished. And I just want you to know that the Lord who offered himself is intentional about fulfilling and completing his purposes in your life. Here's what Paul says, Philippians chapter 1 and verse 6. He says, he who has begun a good work in you will continue to perform it until Jesus comes back. What is God saying to your heart? Has he been speaking to you and drawing you? Have, have you sensed that God has said, okay, it's time. It's time to stop doing it your way and do it my way because I have a plan for you. Think about that for a minute. If you would say yes to God, what would he do? What would he do with your yes? If you were to say to him, yes, Lord, what would he do? The third thing we see here is the burial of Christ. We see in John chapter 19, verse 39, verse 40, the verse 38 through 42, we see that they, they record Jesus. John records Jesus's burial. But there's something specific that John wanted to communicate by recording this burial. Because afterwards, after Jesus has been taken down off the cross, John wanted to give honor to two disciples who were now coming out of the shadows and wanted to stand out in the light. Look, when you look at this burial, you find in verse 38 of John chapter 19, he, we see Joseph of Arimathea's. Arimathea, rather. After this, Joseph being a disciple of Jesus, watch now, but secretly. At this point, nobody is, if they're concerned about their own well-being, is going to attach themselves to Jesus. But Joseph, who had been a secret disciple, goes to Pilate and asks him, can I have the body? I'm going to put him in my tomb. So we see the first witness is Joseph. The next one is, remember Nicodemus who came to Jesus by night. Nicodemus is standing there with him. Nicodemus brought the embalming spices. 
Look at verse 30. And Nicodemus, who at first came to Jesus by night, also came bringing a mixture of myrrh and alloys, about 100 pounds. He said, listen, I want you to see how much I honor Jesus. I brought 100 pounds. It doesn't take 100 pounds. But because he wanted it to be clear that I am one of them who values him. Here's a note that I'd like for you to take with you. When you truly recognize who Jesus is, you will no longer be ashamed to follow him or be associated with him. Because oftentimes we want to be undercover. We want to be on the low when it comes to our faith in Jesus. But here's two witnesses that said, I want it to be known that I love Jesus. The next one is that, that we see the resurrection of Jesus recorded in John chapter 20, verses 10, 1 through 10. I'm almost done. But here's something that we have to go to Luke to grab because Luke records John's account uh, in jo J John 20, verse 1 through 9. But he, he, that's our focus text for the day. But Luke records it a little different. There's a couple things I want you to see that Luke adds to this time. In Luke chapter 24, verse 2 through 7, but they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. Then they went in and did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. And it happened as they were greatly perplexed about this, that behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. And then as they were afraid and bowed their faces to the earth, they said to them, why do you seek the living among the dead? He is not here, but is risen. Remember how he spoke this to you all in Galilee. He reminded, the angels reminded them that, that Jesus had already told them that this was going to take place. So when they came to the grave and found the tomb empty, he says, this is exactly what he said he was going to do. Now, finally, Jesus, then after he resurrected, he revealed himself in infallible appearances. Because naturally, have you ever attended a funeral and you have someone who's grieving, and as they're grieving, they're saying, why did you leave me? Why'd you go? Or they're wrestling with the fact that the one whom they passed, I, I, was, I was attending a funeral and, and someone actually said, come back to me. So naturally, Jesus' disciples have walked with him, so naturally it would be thought that they would, didn't want him to go, and so that they may try to come up with a story that says he actually rose. But Jesus wanted to make sure that it was infallible, that he did not stay in the grave, he actually rose. So, the, so John records several infallible appearances in John chapter 11, verses, uh, John chapter 20, verse 11, through John chapter 21, verse 25, he, he records it, and I want to share some of these. One, he appears to Mary Magdalene. We see that, that he appears to Mary and reveals her and tells them to go tell the disciples and Peter to meet me in Galilee. Then we see that he appears to uh, the disciples for the first time, and Thomas is not there. So remember, doubting Thomas, he reveals himself. Thomas is not there. They said, Thomas, the Lord is alive. Thomas says, well, unless I actually put my finger in the holes in his hand and thrust my hand into his side, I would not believe. So then Jesus reveals himself a second time when Thomas is there. And then John states his purpose for his entire gospel. In John chapter 20, 
verses 30 and 31. Here's what John says. He makes it known why he wrote the very gospel that we are reading today. He says, truly Jesus did more or many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that in believing you may have life in his name. That is the most clear statement and most simplistic statement of the gospel message. That Jesus Christ is the Son of God. that in believing, you may have eternal life. Then he also then re reveals himself to seven of the disciples in chapter 21, verse 1 through 14. Then he speaks uh, to and restores Peter because, remember, Peter doubted. Peter declared, I will, I will never leave you. But once the guard showed up, Peter cowered down, and he denied him three times. But notice this, that Jesus did not get mad at Peter for crumbling under pressure. I need you to hear this because oftentimes we can get fed up with somebody. We say when the going gets tough, what? The tough get going, right? We want you to stay in the fight when it gets tough. But, but Jesus was not like that. Jesus saw that Peter, he had every good intention to stand in there. But Jesus, because he was concerned always about restoration, here's our note. God's love plan through Jesus Christ is his desire to reconcile men back to himself. Not to simply point out that he's perfect and you're not. It is to repair the breach between a perfect and loving God and a broken humanity. Because in the midst of all of that, we see what Paul says is the ministry of reconciliation. I want to share this before I close today. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, here's what the Apostle Paul says. He says, now all things are of God who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses or our trespasses to us, and has committed us this word of reconciliation. Reconciliation is what God desires, that we be reconciled back to himself. And then finally, I want to share this last thing. Because you may be still not convinced that Jesus actually rose. But Paul records in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, he records something that I think is vitally important for us to recognize. Paul actually gives his notes on the gospel message, and then he says something that speaks to a reality of the human journey. He says in verse 3, he says, For I delivered to you, first of all, that Christ Jesus, which was also that I also received, that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures, and that he was seen by Cephas, that is another name for Peter, then by the twelve, and after that he was seen by, here it is, five hundred brethren at one time. You may say, yeah, those disciples, they could have come up with a story. But if you've ever done anything with your family, a group going to try to plan, you know you cannot get even 15 people to get on the same page. 
Anybody been there? But Paul says that 500 witnesses in one place at one time all confirm that Jesus rose from the grave and they saw him alive and well. So if you're not convinced today it is important to understand this. 500 people all agree with their eyes. That's 500 people. That's 1,000 eyes, a million of opinions, and various different ideas. But 500 said, as we've said today, he has risen just like he said he would. Here we go. Through his, his my final word today, through his resurrection, Jesus proved that he is our per, he's perfectly suited to offer you and I eternal life by placing our faith in him. There are a lot of things that are in the world related to religion. And I said this last week because Jesus made a claim that I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life, that no one can come to the Father except through me. You may have been wrestling, you may be wrestling with the ideology that there are many ways to God because you see a lot of devout religious people who are reaching for God. And I would say this to you. Religion is man's effort to try to get to God. But Jesus is God's invitation to man to come to him. You can be religious. You can be spiritual. And you may even say, I'm going to do my very best to be the best person I can be. But I say to you today, the one way to the one God is through the one begotten Son and placing your faith and your confidence in Him. Stand to your feet. On this day, The one reality that we all must face is that we oftentimes try to do our very best. And even in my effort to do my very best, I find that sometimes I miss the mark. So the reality of your own goodness is that it's not reliable. Have you ever set out to do something with good intentions and your good intention didn't work out like you planned? Have you ever wanted to do the right thing and found yourself doing the wrong thing? See, that is the reality of the fact that our goodness is not reliable. But one thing you can be assured of is the goodness of God and the faithfulness of Jesus. 
that when he says, put your faith in me, that that is reliable. He resurrected as he said he would. You can trust that. So I offer you this opportunity to make the decision to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and as your Savior. It is an invitation. An invitation to come and say, I believe that Jesus Christ died for my sins and I embrace him as my Lord and as my Savior. Would you come? If there's someone next to you, if you say, hey, I'm nervous, Pastor, this church is full and I don't, I'm embarrassed about being in front of people. If you're nervous about walking forward by yourself, would you grab the hand of the person next to you? And if someone grabs your hand, would you walk with them to encourage them to say, hey, listen, you're making the right decision. Oh, my brother, we all for Christ. Oh, my sister, he will give you brand new life. He will give you brand new life abundantly. Oh, come. Come on, praise the Lord, yes. Come on, come on, come on. To Christ. I believe there's somebody else here that God is speaking to your heart and telling you that today is your day of salvation, your day to make your decision. We offer Christ to you. We offer Christ You may be here, you say, Pastor, I made a confession of faith, but I just... I, I drifted away, I, I, I backslid, and, I, and today I want to affirm my faith. I want to affirm my confidence in Jesus Christ. I want to dedicate myself or rededicate myself and surrender myself. If that's you, this invitation is for you. Come on today, new life abundantly. Oh, come, oh. You can come just as you are. Yes, you can. Come on. To Christ. Now there's a third part of my invitation today for that person who says I'm already walking with Jesus, already have fellowship with him, but I need a place to be plugged in. And I've been praying and I believe God is planting me here at Amity Bible Church. Pastor Martin, I want to make the decision to make Amity my home. Then this is a third invitation for you. Would you come? If God is saying to you that this is where I would plant you, that you might be a part of the body and plugged in with the rest of the body of Christ that you may have opportunity to be fed and to serve, then that's the third part of this invitation. The first part is for that person that says, I'm making Jesus Lord over my life, making my confession of faith. I'm taking this time because it's important because Jesus says you can only come if he's drawing you. And as you sense him saying, today is your day. Come on. Come on. It's just a decision that you make to surrender to his will because here's what the word of God says that God is not willing that any should perish but that all would come to repentance that God's desire his plan and his will is that every man every woman every boy every girl on the planet will come to that moment when they say I trust Jesus as my Savior he will give you brand new life he will you want to rededicate yourself? Come. You want to make Amity your church? Come. Oh, come. Come on. God bless you. You may be seated. Come on, let's give God a hand blessing for what he has done. Yes, yes, and yes. Praise God. Hallelujah decisions for Christ. Hey, we're going to be baptizing in a moment, but it's time to worship God in our giving. Yeah. Praise God. The candidates are getting ready. We'll be in the water momentarily, but we're going to give you an opportunity to 
give as God has prospered and blessed you. There are multiple ways to give, and they'll share that in a moment. I'm going to pray over you. If you are here in person, there are all envelopes that you'd like to give a physical gift. There are envelopes in front of you, but there are also electronic means to give. Here, let's pray and give God thanks for the blessing of having what we have to give. Amen? Father, we're so grateful that you have been gracious to us and that you've entrusted us with the resources that you've given. And now, God, our hearts are moved to then with grace giving and cheerful giving to offer back to you. We ask, God, that you would receive it and that you'd use it for the furtherance of your kingdom. We thank you and we love you, O oh God. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Good morning, Amity family. It's giving time. There are five ways that you can give to Amity Bible Church. One, you may visit the church website by going to amitybc.org backslash giving and clicking on the giving tab. You may also text to give by texting your dollar amount to 84321. You can also give via our church center app by clicking on give. You may also send your donations by mail to 1601 West Buckingham Road, Richardson, Texas, 75081. You may also drop it in the offering baskets as the ushers now come.
one step forward for me. All right. We're all set. Just sit down. Ready? Praise God, everyone. All of these baptisms are special because they are expressions of faith in Christ Jesus. This one is particularly moving my heart. Two months ago, Sister Joanne was in a car accident and could not move any of her extremities. But she, but she was already had finished her understanding baptism class already scheduled to be baptized. She said, Pastor, I'm going to be baptized on that day. And so to see her labor to be here, to work hard, because her and her husband are being baptized together today. And she said, I cannot, I cannot miss my divine appointment. Amen? Amen. Cross your arms. You need to cover your nose. Okay. Having confessed a hope in Christ Jesus and having received forgiveness of her sins, I baptize this sister on behalf of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And all that we do, we do it in Jesus' name. Here's the other half of this dynamic duo. I'm gonna take your watch off. We'll leave it okay. Cross hands up the Having professed a hope in Christ Jesus and having received forgiveness of his sins, I baptize this brother on behalf of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And all that we do, we do it in Jesus' name. So this is a little sky. She was supposed to be baptized last Sunday with the children, but she had strep throat. But she was determined that, she, that this was her time, amen? And so we're baptizing her today with the adults. Having received forgiveness of her sin, having professed a hope in Christ, and having received forgiveness of your sins, I now baptize this daughter on behalf of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. In all that we do, we do it in Jesus' name. This is one of our youth from our Youth Fusion ministry. As you can see, they've lined up to support her along the wall here to, to let her know. Crush, crush. 
chest, okay? But hold your nose, okay? Having professed a hope in Christ Jesus and having received forgiveness of her sins, I now baptize this daughter on behalf of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. In all that we do, we do it in Jesus' name. Let me say this, this is one of the most on fire young men you're going to find for Jesus, amen. And I want to share his testimony. He said that at some point in his life he was baptized as a kid, but he said it, wasn't, it was just more so to appease his parents. They had faith. They were saying it was something to do. But once he came to the knowledge for himself of Christ Jesus, he said, I want to be baptized now with knowledge of why I'm doing it. So I celebrate his courage for being here today, man. Cross your arms. You can hold your nose. Okay. Having professed a hope in Christ Jesus and having received forgiveness of his sins, I now baptize this brother on behalf of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And all that we do, we do it in Jesus' name. <laughs> this is the second married couple that are being baptized today. This is the wife, Sister Charlotte. She and I were talking recently, so I, I've been keeping aquariums since, since I was 12. She said, Pastor, before we came, I, I checked you out. I found out we got something in common. I got fish aquariums, too. I said, well, praise God. Amen. <laughs> Ready? I'm going to cover your nose. Having professed a hope in Christ Jesus and having received forgiveness of sins, I now baptize this sister on behalf of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And all that we do, we do it in Jesus' name. <laughs> and finally, her husband, Jack. Jack had a special blessing today. His mother, who's waving right now, surprised him and drove in to be here for his baptism. Where'd she come from? She drove in all the way from Mississippi to be here today as a surprise. Love hand, yep. Having professed a hope in Christ Jesus, having received forgiveness of his sins, I now baptize this brother on behalf of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And all that we do, we do it in Jesus' name. Come on, let's give God a hand blessing. We'll see you just in a moment. Oh.
so that Sister Joanne doesn't have to try to come up the stairs, we're gonna come down to her and present our candidates with their certificate of baptism. Amen? Amen. Let's give God a hand blessing for these. Amen, amen, amen. Praise God. We are excited about the journey that they are on, a journey of faith. Hey, it's important for us to recognize, we realize it's, it's Resurrection Sunday, and so we, would, we want to be able to acknowledge any visitors or guests we have today. If you're visiting with us for the very first time, would you please stand? Wonderful, 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 wonderful. God bless you. It is our distinct pleasure to host you today. We're glad that you chose to worship with us. We realize you had other options, but you came to be with us today. We pray that you've been blessed today during your time. They're going to give you a card. If you would, bring that card to the Welcome Center in the lobby. My wife and I would love an opportunity to greet you personally and to thank you for being, being guests of Amity Bible Church today. God bless you. Come see us again soon. Any second or third time visitors, you, you came and visited, you decided to come back once again. Amen. God bless you. Bless you. Thank you. Thank you for coming back and visiting with us again. We pray you're blessed as you were the first time. We're thankful for that. I wonder why you remain standing. So, Mary Lee, could you stand, please? Sister Mary Lee Fosha has been on a journey for the last few months. At one point in this journey, she could not move her extremities, but she said, Pastor, I'm going to be in church on Easter Sunday. And there she is right there. We praise God for his faithfulness. Amen. And so her, her goddaughter and her husband have come in town to help care for her. And so they were joyously bringing her in to worship today. Amen. God bless you. All first-time visitors, there's some ladies in the back. We're going to go ahead and release you. They're waiting for you. They've holding the sign up saying follow us. If you're visiting for the first time and you got a card, please follow those ladies. We'll see you in just a moment in the Welcome Center. Amen? Here in the moment, we're going to play the, the, the church announcements, and then we're going to dismiss you guys and let you go. Hey, this is Resurrection Sunday, a glorious day, and we have joy, enjoyed ourselves in the Lord. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Before you leave... Would you stop by and greet our new candidates for baptism and give them the right hand of fellowship? Amen? Amen. Before you head out. All right. We're going to go ahead and do that. Yes. Ladies, this Friday begins yeah. Women's Weekend with the Women's Prayer and Praise Service on Friday night at 7 o'clock. And then remember to invite friends and family, co-worker, and bring donations for the Minis Pantry for this blessed time of prayer and praise and worship. Testimonies and an encouragement from the speaker, Nakia Ham Hammonds Blakely. Praise God. Women's Weekend. All right. 
just to expedite things, we're going to go ahead and have the announcements start, and then I'm going to dis I'm going to dismiss, and we'll play the announcements. You got to tune in to get the information you need. I'm going to let you go. Amen? Amen. All right, let's all stand. Don't forget to stop by and, 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 and extend the right hand of fellowship to all of our candidates. We pray you a blessed day. Please, please have an awesome week. He rose. Amen? Yes. Now may the grace of our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ, may his grace rest, rule, and abide with us both now and forever. If you agree, please say amen. amen. God bless you. Go in Amity great. family awesome. and guests, happy Resurrection Sunday. Thanks for being here with us today. There's a lot of things happening here at Amity, and we wanted to take a moment to share some upcoming things for you and your family. Ready? Let's get connected. Calling all high school seniors. There's a scholarship opportunity with your name on it. Applications are open and can be submitted. Today is the last day you have until 11.59 p.m. Visit Church Center to submit your application. What are you waiting for? Do it now. Amity Women, you don't want to miss Amity's Women's Weekend 2024, April 5th through the 7th. The weekend will feature a women's prayer and praise service with guest speak Dr. Nakia Hammonds Blakely from the Potter's House North. Registration is not required. Let's worship together on April 5th from 7 to 8.30 p.m. Purpose-inspiring sessions in the Amity's Women Choir. Mark your calendar. Tell your friends and family as you do not want to miss this amazing time of learning, fellowship, and encouragement. It's been a great worship service. Stay connected during the week by visiting our website at amitybc.org or take us with you on the go via the Church Center app. Be sure you like and subscribe to our Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram at Amity Bible Church. Our prayer is that you have an amazing week and that God will meet you right where you are. Have a great week. Let's continue to make Him known. And that's going to wrap up another incredible word. And we want to thank you for visiting Amity Bible Church. If you're in need of prayer or counsel, just speak to one of our friendly ushers and they can assist you. If you and that's going to wrap up another incredible word. And we want to thank you for visiting Amity Bible Church. If you're in need of prayer or counsel, just speak to one of our friendly ushers and they can assist you. If you would like to join, receive these and other sermon notes, or attend our Wednesday night Bible study at 6.30, online or in person, visit us at AmityBC.org. Until next week, be blessed.